It's been a little while since we've done a greenhouse update and I've got a few things I need to get planted today. A few trays of lettuce. So let's go in here in the greenhouse, see what's going on and get some lettuce planted. All right, so this greenhouse is a busy, busy place this time of year. It's almost at capacity and we've still got a good bit to plant. Now it's mostly full of cool weather stuff right now, what I like to call early spring crops, things like broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, beets. And those are getting close. They're not quite ready to get out of here, but they're getting close. And hopefully we can get those trays out of here soon and get some more of this warm weather stuff started. If this is your first time on our channel, welcome. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and that bell notification button down below so you get notified every time we come out with a new video. And if you are a frequent viewer of our channel, it's always good to have you back. So let's see what we've got growing here. A lot of these are newer varieties that we've recently added to the site. So excited about trying those. On the end there, we've got a tray of rutabagas and I really enjoyed transplanting rutabagas this year. So those are coming along nicely. Then we've got some pak choy or bok choy there. That is the darker stemmed bok choy variety we have called Fing King. I'm not sure if that's really how you pronounce it, but that's how I've been pronouncing it. And we've got lots of beets here. Hall said he wanted to grow a lot of beets this spring, so I planted a lot for him. These two here are the Kyogia variety. These are those kind of candy cane striped beets. So two nice flats of those. Then we come over here to some bobcat cabbage. And we grew the Cheers cabbage. This fall slash winter, and it did really good for us. We just brought this bobcat variety on. I've heard good things about it, so looking forward to trying that. Emerald crown broccoli, which we've heard really good things about as well. Gonna try that. We've got our Top Bunch 2.0 collards. So we're gonna plant these beside our tiger collards so we can kind of compare them. They're both really good varieties, but so we can see if there's any discernible differences between the two. More cabbage here. We've got some Rio Grande red cabbage. More beets here. These are gold beets, the touchstone gold variety. Some yellow cauliflower. This is a variety called Flame Star. And I like the yellow cauliflower going into spring as the temperatures are warming because they don't really, it doesn't bother them to get bleached by the sun because they're supposed to be kind of a yellowish orange color anyway and the heads just hold really well and uh, it's one of my favorite varieties to grow in spring going into summer more beets here we've got some merlin beets some more gold beets and then finally over here our newest variety of cauliflower called twister which is a white variety and it's supposed to have really really good wrapping leaves to protect those heads keep them nice and bleach white if we switch over to this side here, looks like Greg has been in here planting him some lettuce. So he's got a couple trays of lettuce he planted. I'm going to plant my own here in a minute. Then we've got some of this Godzilla broccoli, which is a new variety. It's supposed to make uh, tall plants and the heads sit right on top of the plants and make for easy harvesting. We've got some of that good old Cheers cabbage there that we had such good success with this fall and winter. So we'll grow that side by side with some of that bobcat cabbage and see how we like it. I've got some more cool flowers right here. So I've really enjoyed growing those calendula flowers this fall and winter and really enjoyed the, the kind of organic or natural pest control benefits those have given me. So I've got another flat of the calendula mix growing and then I've got a flat of this marigold sparky mix. And a lot of people have been asking is, is calendula, what's the difference between calendula and a marigold? Calendula is what they call a Scottish marigold. And then this right here, this marigold sparky mix is what they call a French marigold. So they're both technically marigolds, just two different versions. Here's our trays we're gonna plant today. We'll get back to those in just a minute. Go over here to the heat mat. So the only thing we really grow on a heat mat are these warm weather crops that we need to seed in the greenhouse in early spring when it's still kind of cool outside. So I've already got my peppers started. I've got two flats here and I tried to do it where kind of all the hotter peppers were in one tray and all the sweeter peppers were in one tray. 
and as you can see there the smaller cells on that tray there so i decided to grow up my peppers in our new 338 trays this spring i figured if i got to step them up to four inch pots anyway might as well get more pepper plants out of the space this tray occupies and try them in those 338s so we've got all kind of good stuff here some bell peppers touchdown bayonet mini bell mix we've got some sweet roasting peppers aruba cubanelle merlot which is a purple bell pepperoncini beaver dam and lola which is a new banana pepper variety we've got and then over here the hotter stuff we've got a uh, cinder jalapeno tabasco tiburon which is a poblano cowhorn hot pepper that's a new one this durango guajillo pepper or guajillo pepper i'm really excited about uh, Anaheim, Santa Fe Grand, and Serrano. All kind of good peppers there. And then this guy, which is new in the greenhouse today, Greg must have did this over the weekend, is, if we can lift this lid up here, looks to be his ghost peppers. So this is one of our deluxe kits. This is just a, a green bottom tray. The ones we sell come with a, a black bottom tray. So it looks like he's got about, let's see, four times six times two. He's got about 48 ghost pepper plants started in here. So that is a lot of hot, hot peppers. Not sure why he needs that many, but go for it. And uh, that will be exciting to see how those come along. I guess he's got this humidity dome on top of them here to kind of encourage the germination keep it nice and moist in there and on that heat mat they should germinate reasonably well we've got the thermostat on that baby set at 100 so it's nice and warm great for things like peppers and we'll put our tomatoes and eggplants and watermelons and okra and pumpkins on these heat mats too when it comes time to seed those and now today we're going to be planting a flat of head lettuce here and then i want to show you a cool little trick with our bottom trays here where we can plant some of this leaf lettuce or cut and come again type lettuce so this is the bottom tray that fits this 162 or our 338 cell tray and uh, most people use this bottom tray as a water catchment system so they can grow seeds or seedlings in these trays inside but I'm going to show you a neat little trick how you can make you a fast little salad tray out of this bottom tray if you're not using it to start transplants. But first let's start with the head lettuce. So I've got two varieties I'm going to plant here today. I've got this Tejama lettuce, which uh, grew some of that this fall and winter. Really liked it. Really, really big heads. And this Cherokee lettuce, which has been another winter for me. It's really heat tolerant. Makes some big, dense heads. So um, we're going to just kind of split this tray here in half. And we're going to do one half of this tray in Tejama. And then we're going to do the other half of this tray in Cherokee. So all the ones this way will plant Cherokee. All the cells this way will put Tejama. So I just take my finger and poke some little indentions there where I'm going to put my seeds. I don't want to get too deep. Average or rule of thumb here is to make your dibble or your hole twice as big as the diameter of the seed you're planting. And with these hybrid improved lettuce varieties we have like the Cherokee and the Tejama, we have them in pelleted form. So what they do is they take that lettuce seed and they coat it with clay to make it nice and round and that makes it a heck of a lot easier to singulate the seed in these trays here so you can make sure you just get one seed per cell you get more from your seed packet that way because you're not thinning you're not wasting a lot of extra seed and you're going to save a lot of time it doesn't take near as long to seed with these bigger pelleted seed as it does that raw seed so for singulating in these trays this pelleted seed is the way to go all right so we got our seeds in there you can see each of those little pelleted seeds there only one per cell easy to put in there and singulate so we conserve our seed 
and get the most out of our seed packet there. And all we need to do is kind of dust those in, lightly cover them here in a minute. You know, with these pelleted hybrid varieties, they germinate so well that you, you don't need to account for any lack of germination by putting more than one seed in the cell. These things are going to germinate fast and pretty uniformly. You know, it, it's not unusual for us to get, you know, between 95 and 100% germination on a tray of these pelleted lettuce seeds. So we can just put one seed per cell. We should, should have a nice full tray. Now over here, we're going to do something a little different. Now I showed you that Tehama and the Cherokee, which are both pelleted that we planted in the seed tray earlier. And these are some of our OP or open pollinated lettuce varieties, like this black seeded Simpson. We just brought on this red deer tongue. And then we have a baby leaf mix. Now, this is just my opinion on the matter. But if I'm growing lettuce for heads, I like to use these pelleted hybrid varieties and I like to singulate them in these trays here, one seed per cell. Now, if I'm growing for leaf lettuce or cut and come again type lettuce, I like using these OP varieties here and planting them real thick. Now, since this is raw lettuce seed, it's a lot smaller and a lot harder to singulate. So it's easier to plant this kind of stuff to scatter it out and plant it real thick and then do a cut and come again technique with it to get multiple harvests. So if we look at this raw lettuce seed from that baby leaf lettuce mix, you can see it's a lot smaller. The uh, seeds are kind of oblong shaped. They're kind of papery in nature. And these things are hard to pick up individually and put them in the seed tray. So the way I like to do it is to scatter these things thick in a bed in the garden or like in this tray we'll do today, plant them thick, and then we can come here with a knife or some scissors and make us a quick salad. So I'm just gonna take this baby leaf lettuce packet here and kind of just sprinkle it liberally on this tray here. Make sure we get plenty of it everywhere. I want to plant this stuff thick and we'll get one more packet. All right, so I don't know if you can see that there. Maybe you can. All those tiny little lettuce seeds we scattered on there. You might could get away with just one of these packets for one of these bottom trays, but I went ahead and put two in there just to get it nice and thick. So we got a nice little stand of leaf lettuce here. So when we do cut it, we'll get a nice big bowl full. So now all we need to do is take some of our pro mix here and I like to break it up so there's no chunks there and just dust. I use the term dust, but it just means lightly, lightly cover these seeds. And so we'll just come in here, like this right here and just lightly cover them. We don't want to put too much on there. General rule of thumb is just put enough so it covers that seed but that you can still see the divisions between the cells and the seed tray and then we'll come over here and we'll lightly dust this bottom tray here for our leaf lettuce we don't need to put a whole lot on these guys here these seeds are especially small like i showed you earlier but we do want to cover them up a little bit just to get some good seed to soil contact Make sure we have good germination. And lastly, we just need to sprinkle them in. So we've got our shower head nozzle here on our dram wand and we wet this mix down in the tray really good before we put our seeds down. And you always wanna do that. And then now that we've dusted it with some of the dry mix, we we'll to make sure we get that nice and wet too. So just wanna be careful when you're doing this or else you'll scatter soil everywhere. Just kind of wave it around. Just be real light and gentle with your watering so you don't push your seeds all over the place or push them out of the tray or, or strow that seed starting mix everywhere. And that should be good there. That seed starting mix is nice and moist. Keep that good and wet until these seeds germinate and then we'll back off the water just a little bit. 
I like to water them enough initially so until I see that water dropping down out of the bottom of that seed tray. That's how I know I got that seed starting to mix nice and wet so those seeds will all germinate evenly. So I want to thank you for joining me today in the greenhouse as we got some more lettuce planted. Just to recap what I mentioned earlier, if I'm doing head lettuce, I want to grow nice big heads for a single cut lettuce. I'll grow these hybrid varieties with the pelleted seed just because they're easier to get in the trays. And then if I'm just doing leaf lettuce or cut and come again lettuce, I'll grow these open pollinate varieties. You can grow the individual ones with the mixes like this and plant them real thick and do it as a cut and come again type crop. If you're interested in any of the varieties I talked about in this video, I'll put a link below to our seeds so you can go check those out. I also put a link to our seed starting supplies so you can check those out. If you enjoyed this video, give me a big like, give me a big thumbs up and a big share, and we will see you guys next time.